So just a disclaimer on this video, it might get a little bit heavy and a bit philosophical at some point. So if you're not ready for that sort of thing, there's your warning. Just click away now. So we all went through COVID-19, through the lockdowns, and we all felt how distressing and anxiety inducing it was to just be at home and isolated from people. So imagine now you were back in that period and you went online to connect with other people who were going through the same sort of thing to feel a bit less alone. And all you saw online and from your friends was people talking about how amazing it was, how great it was to be back in their rooms, to be able to do what they wanted, to be away from all the, all the stress of regular life. How fucking alone would you feel? You'd, you'd feel isolated, you'd feel crazy, and it'd really like exacerbate any anxiety that you were already feeling. That's how I'm feeling right now with this, um, these new AI tools for music making. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, these new music AI platforms which create any sort of song from just a couple, a couple words, text to music sort of thing, they've come out in the last week or so, or at least the big ones have, and they're exactly what it sounds like. For the first time in some of these things that I've seen, they're actually very good and they work very well, and I'd say like maybe a quarter of the songs, if you weren't looking for it, you would not be able to tell they were made by AI. And they have vocals and it's it's been pretty scary to me. And when I went online to try and find some support, some other musicians who were going through this and worried about the future, all I saw were people talking about how incredible the tools were and all the amazing stuff, which is cool, but it made me feel extremely alone. Secondly, when musicians were on there talking about how it didn't sound entirely human and there were still things humans had that AI didn't, made me feel even more alone because it felt like those that perspective came from a place of denial um, and not confronting the problem. Neither of those helped. I'm making this video maybe just for me, um, maybe not, maybe for some of you out there who are feeling similar ways to try and um, connect and feel a little bit less alone. But yeah, I just had some fears and ideas I wanted to get off my chest and maybe a few ideas which might help some other people who are going through the same sort of thing. Because I've messaged a lot of my artist friends and people who make music as well, and I think it's a time we all really need to come together and like be open about like the mental health sort of stuff during this period. If you're a visual artist and you've been going through this over the last like year with all the other tools which have come out, I've been ignorant and I'm sorry. Um, but I really feel it now and I understand. So before I talk about like ways to proceed forward and what I think like might happen in the future, I, I need to like address and get off my chest some of the fears which I've had around this sort of thing. If you don't want to hear this stuff, I understand. Just again, <laughs> click off the video because we're not trying to fear monger here. Um, I'm just trying to confront a problem head on. There have been two main fears which have arisen with these with this whole AI situation. Um, so the first one is that these tools look like they're designed to replace, not to enhance. So for the longest time, um, I've taken comfort in the idea that as AI moves forward, everyone's abilities to create things will be increased at a similar level. So um, I might, I, I saw it in a video from Big Z, I might put it up on the screen, I might not. And eventually these tools are going to get so good that anyone in the world that wants to make a song can make a song even if they know nothing technical about music production. So the general public's ability to make a song will go from nothing to something. But the fact is that expert songwriters and producers will also have access to these same tools. So they'll get even better at making music too. Assuming you both have the same knowledge of how to use the AI tools, then the expert will win every time. Where you don't want to be caught is this area right here. This is where someone that knows how to use these tools really well could actually beat you out if you don't learn how to use them too. The idea is that if the average person's ability to make a song is here and a musician's ability to make it is here, if AI tools come along and both people use them, the ability to make songs will increase like this. But that's not really what's been happening or what I see happening in this. What I see happening is a massive increase to the people of people who don't know how to make anything and a very modest increase to the people who already know how to make music, which would put a lot of people out of a job and seriously change the, the landscape. It's an interaction effect. It's used a lot in psychology. It's like if you had say a group of arachnophobes in one and you measured their level of anxiety towards spiders and then you had like a control group with like the regular population and like comfort around spiders was measured so arachnophobes are down here regular people are up here if you then apply a treatment condition or a treatment to both of these groups which increases the comfort with spiders these people are going to benefit so much more than these other people um so that 
it'll become more of a leveling out effect. Fear number two is that this stuff is a lot closer than I initially felt that it was. Like I knew this stuff was coming um, and I think a lot of us did, but the actual abilities of these machines don't scare me as much as the rate of change. Only like a year or so ago, all these things created by AI, the, the, the sounds and the audio stuff was just, it was almost laughable. But now if you look at how good this is, most of these, a lot of these you wouldn't be able to even recognize as AI, which is really fucking scary because what a lot of people don't seem to be internalizing is that this isn't a linear trend. This is an exponential trend. And if we're 10 times further ahead than we were last year right now, in one year, we're not going to be another 10 times. We're going to be 100 times or whatever. This isn't a future problem. This is a now problem. And that's been creating a lot of fucking anxiety for me. Yeah, all of this has kind of culminated into one question. What's the fucking point? So let's look at the worst case scenario. This isn't to be intentionally bleak or to fear monger again, like I said before, but it's more because for me at least, I feel like confronting the worst possibility will mean that any other developments, if I can, if I can grapple with the worst possibility, any further developments as we move forward won't come as a shock. They'll be more, slightly more expected and I'll be able to deal a lot better than if I hadn't confronted this. What if sooner than we think, AI is able to make music that is as good and better than every human made music in the world. And streaming platforms are flooded with AI made music and you can't tell the two apart really. And the people who buy music and support music are reduced to the niche of people who currently buy vinyl or people who will buy like antique and handmade woodworking just because it's made by a human. What if we're in that situation? I ask myself the question, why does this why does this thought and this future fucking bother me so much? Why does it scare the shit out of me? And I think it comes back to identity in, in a few ways. And what I mean by that is because music has become such a fundamental part of my identity, if that's taken from me, everyone can do it and it doesn't make me special or significant anymore, then what am I? Am I just worthless? Am I naked in this fucking world? Do I have nothing left to give? But the thing is, if we actually look at what identity is, it's a psychological defense mechanism, which um, we use to create some sort of self story and to contrive some sort of meaning that we exist and we are more important than just a, a fucking little bits of dust put together on a rock floating in space. And we need this because it allows us to function every day. It allows us to like keep those uncomfortable thoughts at bay. So a lot of the time, it's not a great idea to question this. And like a lot of people go through their whole lives without ever doing that. But I feel like in times like this, where identity comes under such a massive threat, it's important to look at it and examine it and see that it's not what we actually think it is. So if I become completely undifferentiated and musicians can't be recognized from AI counterparts, does that mean that we still don't get joy from making the music, from making the art, from expressing ourselves? No, we, we still achieve such a fundamental sense of satisfaction from actualizing some feelings we have or just sitting at a piano or a guitar or at our computers. But then the obvious question comes up of, well, what if this is my livelihood and I'm not just doing it for fun and to feel all amazing? Am I just a musician? Am I just someone who makes music? If you strip that away from me, am I not existing in this world and full of love to give and empathy and do I not have people around me who I care about that care about me and so many incredible things to experience and the capacity for awe and so many things to give to the world and the ability to adapt given any circumstances? I don't think so. I think when we become so tied up in an identity like that, we our emotions don't give us the time to understand that we are more than just this one thing. So, so understanding this maybe helps, maybe helps me feel a little bit more like as things change and continue to change, that I will be able to adapt and change and still have so many different parts of me to give. Whether or not that's still just defending this idea of identity, I don't fucking know, but comforts me a little bit right now and I think the more at, f at ease I can be with change and flow 
um, knowing that I'm not just this one set thing is comforting and necessary because people for thousands of years have been replaced by tools and machines, maybe at a, at a different rate and with different characteristics to now, but they've all been able to change and adapt and they've all worked it out together. So if they could, I'm trusting in the fact that you and I can as well. And this is obviously until robots take absolutely everything, but that's fucking endgame shit. Then what's the difference between worrying about that and worrying about death itself? And I mean, we're all gonna have to deal with that anyway at some point. So as much as before I was saying that this is very close and often a lot closer than people have been making out, it's not here yet. And these tools aren't perfect yet. So there's no point in mourning the loss of something which is still here. So how is the world gonna change? What's this big grand plan for artists moving into the future? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Hopefully we can work it out together. But I have a couple ideas which have just been floating around my head. They might be complete bullshit. They might not, who knows? Maybe they'll help a little bit. So if we look at what is the last thing that robots will replace us with and we work backwards from there, Surely, in my mind, surely it has to be the ability to be human and to connect with other people on a human level and with everything that makes us imperfect. So what can that mean for art? I feel like the, the art and the, the connection which is going to cut through more and more in the future as everything else becomes drowned out are two things, human stories and imperfections. And they're kind of the same thing, but... I don't know, for the purpose of this video, I've segregated them. What are the things that make you imperfect? What are the things you fucking hate about yourself or about the art you make or the things that don't make sense? Is it the the way you sing that has a strange, has a little strange timbre which you hate? Or is it your piano playing which is really not up to scratch? Or is it the room noise in your room when you try and record some shit? Or is it the fact that you can't afford heaps of different paints or some awesome tools to make the stuff that you want? Or is it even on a human level the fucking concerning amount of conflicting emotions that you have that you can express to your work. Whatever those are, I feel like if we push those as far as we can into our work and lean as far in as we can, that has to resonate in a way which isn't replicable by any um, machine learning algorithms, at least initially. And the second one that I've kind of thought of maybe is stories. It could be a culmination of like your, your life and everything about you, or it could just be the boring mundane day-to-day-ness of everything you do. It could be within your work or it could be around your work, which I think could become a lot more important. If we reach a world where AI can completely replicate the final product, it won't be able to replicate the process and the way that you get there quite yet. Until Endgame again, that is, of course. And what's the one thing that all of that requires? I think that one thing is courage. It's more courage than we've ever had to really show in our work. Obviously for the longest time, work which is super vulnerable in this way has really resonated with a lot of people and we know that. But in the past we've had other outs, other ways that we could differentiate and we may have not had to confront these difficulties head on. But I feel like it's gonna become more and more necessary to confront and expose all the parts of you which you've you've kept in, uh, hidden away so as to uh, appear as someone who has, has it entirely together to people in the outside world. That's exactly what artists are going to, I feel like, have to become in the near future. And it's possible that this is too high of a price to pay for some people, that art isn't worth that sort of thing. And this isn't a finger wagging sort of thing. I might go down that path as well. I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> Even if that is, you still have a lot more to give than um, being an artist or being a musician that you may have thought. But I think I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna fucking just throw shit at the wall. I'm gonna show more of my process than I have before. And I'm just gonna try and open up and be as naturally humanly me as I possibly can. We'll see. So yes, this is a lot and I can't tell how much I'm doing this for myself, my own selfish reasons that I need to get this off my chest and feel less alone versus for other people to like bring together. But I, either way, I think that's really what we need to do as artists because mental health is no fucking joke um, and starting a conversation is really important. And I know a lot of this may come across as pseudo, pseudo intellectualizing this, these sort of emotional things. And I'm, I consider myself privileged that I've never really had to endure 
extreme emotional hardship. People who have had to endure that stuff might have different takes to this, and I would love to hear any alternative approaches. I would also love to hear any alternative visions for the future. You see some different direction, um, but yeah, I think a conversation is is well worth starting. And if everything I've just said is completely wrong, then hopefully the one thing that can provide a bit of comfort is that I'm also feeling this way too, and I'm sure a lot of other people are as well, so you're definitely not alone.